Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, uh, let me start by, by first thanking our, our hosts uh, for uh, uh, the, the invitation to be with you here this morning and uh, to thank them also for a really excellent organization, excellent facilities, uh, excellent intellectual kind of environment that, that I think puts us to, on the path of very fruitful discussions. Um, and um, I'd like to start uh, by also congratulating them on uh, the outcome of the first part that we had the past couple of days, the open air a research project. Uh, again, I found it very, very interesting and stimulating and, and congratulations on this huge effort that you managed to pull out on time for this Congress, which, which is a great achievement. Uh, so uh, add to, to what, what has been said, uh, welcome to all of you to this uh, third global Congress on intellectual property and the public interest. And what I'm going to try is, 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 is to get you through this uh, transition from this, this the regional uh, aspect we had, uh, regional focus, to this more global focus. Uh, I don't know, many of you know me. Uh, some of you who know me know I'm quite a, an anxious person, actually. <laughs> and uh, with jet lag and sleep deprivation, my anxiety increases. So I end up haunted by recurring questions. Who am I? Where am I? Why am I here? So uh, when I was asked to prepare these, these welcoming remarks, I said, this is the fundamental question. Why are we here? Right? It's like, why, what, what brings these fantastic people all together, right? So there's many possibilities, because we're interested in intellectual property. Uh, we're interested to meet interesting people working in this area. We're interested to visit Cape Town, maybe. But fundamentally, when I think about uh, the many people I know here, uh, what strikes me, really, to the core of the matter is that many of you, if not all of you, are interested in change. Change. Many of you, by your writings, by your advocacy, have advanced change in the global governance of knowledge and intellectual property over the past years. Change, I think, is the most powerful idea of our times. John F. Kennedy said, it is the law of our times. Right? And if you do not think about change, adapt to change, willing to accept change, you are faced a very difficult situation. So change. How has change happened in the global intellectual uh, landscape over the past couple of years? When I was thinking about uh, some of the issues I've been involved in, some of you have been involved in, I see three fundamental elements you need to have aligned to have change. You need a solid narrative, a solid framing of the issues, you need an appropriate timing, and you need strong coalitions and networks. When these three elements are aligned, you are able to produce change. Right? So these three elements are fundamental. The narratives, the frameworks, the, fr the narratives, the, 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 the framing we have used relate to many important values such as public health, such as digital freedoms, such as human rights, such as development. These have been very powerful framing narratives that have influenced and uh, fed into a lot of the change that has happened in this area. So if we keep this in mind, we keep the three elements in mind, when they are aligned, we get some of the outcomes that we have gotten in past years particularly uh, my focus, um, the focus of my work in particular is at the multilateral level. So we get the, trips, the Doha Declaration on Trips on Public Health, uh, the White Food Development Agenda, uh, the global strategy of the World Health Organization, uh, the movement on SOPA, PIPA, and ACTA, and uh, most recently, the World Intellectual Property Treaty for uh, Visually Impaired Persons which I think from the Congress we had last year is probably one of the significant uh, developments that have occurred. A significant development because it's the first treaty in recent years to address a specific category of users rather than the usual expansion of rights uh, for right holders. But even on a normative uh, aspect, this is the first international intellectual property treaty to include a reference to human rights. 
in its preamble. This is, in terms of the normative landscape, a very important development. But what happens when we don't have these three elements of change aligned? Or, uh, sorry, before that, uh, the change also is not only happening internationally, it's also happening regionally and nationally. And I'm very, I'm very happy that Tobias mentioned the, the, necessity, the, 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 the importance of the regional and national dimensions. Many efforts of reform over the past years have happened at the national level. Proposals for patent reform in Brazil, for legal reform and copyright in India, the recent IP policy in South Africa, judicial decisions in Canada and in other countries, in India also. A lot is happening at the national level. At the regional uh, level also, interesting things are happening. Uh, I think the Open Air Project is, is, is an interesting uh, uh, attempt to, to focus on issues at the regional level. We've had, in the, in, in the context of the Africa, an, an, an attempt to create a pan-African intellectual property organization that could regulate intellectual property in Africa. It's still very unclear where it is, but it's a significant development. So also a lot of action happened regionally and nationally, and I think that is also a shift from the focus on just the multilateral outcomes to translating these outcomes to the re uh, regional and national level. So going back to what I was saying, that what happens when the three elements are not aligned? We, we get stuck on two issues, the protection of traditional knowledge and access to clean technologies. We don't have the three elements aligned. And these issues are not moving. Right? And the fundamental problems we are stuck in relates to the narrative, the framework. There is no agreement, or there is different views, on the framing of these issues, not only internationally, but even uh, nationally. If, we, if I think of the discussions that happen in this country on the bill on the protection of indigenous uh, knowledge, of indigenous innovation, very messy process, very, very confusing, even to someone outside trying to follow the issues. Uh, I'm happy Professor Drahos mentioned yesterday the issue of clean technologies, clean energy. Because that is one of the biggest challenges, I think, of, 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 our, of, of, of the next years. There is, no, there is disagreement on how this relates to intellectual property and what should be done in this area. So getting the narrative uh, uh, right and the framing right is extremely uh, important. <coughs> now, this brings me to the Global Congress. Global conversations like the ones we're going to have over the next three days, can help us to think about these elements and think about how to align them. So this Global Congress is, is just to give you a bit, for those who, who maybe not, not be aware, is, is, is really the, 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 comes in a series of previous global conversations that have happened on intellectual property development, access to knowledge, and public interest. So. Uh, uh, Ten years ago, uh, you had something called the Bellagio Dialogues on, on IP and development, again, who brought a group of people from different parts of the world to reflect on issues relating to IP and uh, development. Uh, later, you had the, 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 the Yale Access to Knowledge Conferences, and most recently, the Global Congress. Of course, you had meeting even before 2002, but I think these are the, 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 the fora that brought people to reflect not just on one issue, such as health or medicines, but to think more broadly in terms of the, the, the global landscape and the challenges faced relating to global knowledge, governance, and intellectual property governance. The first Congress that happened in Washington two years ago, uh, again, for those who may not be aware about the background, uh, produced a, a document called the Washington Declaration on Intellectual Property and the Public Interest uh, that I think is, captures a lot of the sensitivities, uh, proposals, ideas that uh, People in this community thought that needed to be highlighted. Uh, I was looking at it yesterday. I think it, it remains a, a, a quite a relevant uh, document. So those who, who are not familiar with it may wish to have a look at it. But uh, I think one of the, 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 the interesting things we have seen is that uh, we have changed the location of the Congresses, uh, going from uh, uh, DC to uh, Rio de Janeiro to Cape Town this year, and at each time a different community also has come into this conversation and that, I think that's part also of trying to diversify and extend the reach of the conversations we're having. On a thematic basis, the first Congress was mostly focused on uh, limitations and exceptions and enforcement. 
the Rio Congress uh, saw a new track on access to medicines. This Congress uh, has a track, uh, a very welcome addition on traditional knowledge. In previous Congresses, uh, you had tracks on, on IP and development, but I think in this Congress, they have been main mainstreamed in, in other tracks. So uh, as we go, there has been additions, evolution, building up of what, 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 what has been done, and, and, and some experimentation. And uh, I think that, that is also reflects the richness of, of this conversation and, and, and the involvement of, of people from, from different parts uh, of the world. Now, so, so what are the expectations that, 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 that we have at the beginning of this exercise? Well, first, to take stock and review current development and challenges. Right? What are the most critical challenges in development we are facing? Notably, since we met last year, what has happened uh, in, in our environments and, 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 and what are the urgencies we face? Uh, the second, because uh, uh, knowledge is part of the framing narrative. Knowledge is part of action. What are the knowledge gaps? What are the research priorities that these new developments and challenges bring to us? Finally, what would be the elements of a positive agenda and action-oriented proposals that can help translate this knowledge into action, right? So these are three things to have in mind as you engage uh, in your deliberations. Finally, uh, just to conclude by saying that in these different Congresses, there are recurrent challenges that I, I've, I've tried to, to think about and to capture. That there's still first a sense of urgency, right? Of dealing with the negative agenda, right? Uh, the agenda that uh, uh, challenges uh, some of the, the, the things we're trying to advance. And I think the TPP negotiations are, uh, uh, I think, the most pressing issue on the horizon in this regard. Another challenge we face is that uh, we tend to be uh, effective in terms of the negotiation of agreements, what they include, how the laws are drafted, but less so when it comes to implementation, how they are implemented. Right? And particularly uh, at the multilateral, multilateral level, you can see that uh, developing countries are good in getting, in general, uh, s some good outcomes in these fora, but then the follow-up and the implementation is challenging. I think the WIPO development agenda is, 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 is one big example uh, of that in particular. We've always hesitated also in our conversation between looking at existing frameworks, <laughs> reforming the existing knowledge structures in particular relation to the intellectual property system, but also thinking about alternative frameworks, right? Is it enough to act within the system, within the existing realm of knowledge governance, or we also have to go outside of it and think about users' rights, uh, other um, incentives for innovation? How do we connect to broader conversations that are going on in the world on jobs, on innovation, on privacy. These are the fundamental issues, or some of the fundamental issues, that are in the minds of uh, policymakers, uh, of wide sectors of society, right? And in particular, innovation, I think, I, I think innovation is really a fundamental issue to, to, to grapple with and, and how to, 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 to show that the end result is to promote innovation that we're seeking to achieve. And, and that's why changes are needed. And finally, connecting to broader uh, range of stakeholders, the media, the media plays a very important role today, but also to judges. I think we, one of the, 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 the most interesting things we've seen in the past years is that judiciary bodies, both in developed and developing countries, uh, have a very huge impact on uh, many of the ideas we are discussing and many of uh, the, uh, the attempts uh, to reform and shaping uh, the outcomes relating to uh, knowledge and intellectual property <coughs> governments. So uh, I will end by, 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 by a quotation of, 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 of Kennedy, who 50 years passed since he, 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 he died, and there was a lot of celebration in the United States in particular. Uh, he says, a man may die, nations may rise and fall, but an idea lives on. Ideas have endurance without death. And it's something I, I, I really personally believe in. So I think uh, I wish you fruitful discussions and, and, and many ideas that will endure 
beyond uh, this Congress. Thank you very much.